Um, if you can just comment, um, just who, if you're, who's watching with you, um, it's hard for us to tell who's there, so we just want to just say hi, a quick comment maybe, and just say, say who's watching, that would be, that would be great. Um, well, today is, uh, it's a good day, because it's the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice in that, and we're going to praise Him, and we're going to come, and we're going to be, be one together as a church, church body. We are all, all the same in Christ, and so um, I want to challenge us today. I want to challenge us that we would praise the Lord from our inmost being, all right, from, from deep within, like from the depths of our soul to praise him, from our hearts. So this is not surface level. This is not just singing a song just to sing a song, but this is like worshipful from our heart. And so that's even from a place where maybe you, it's been a tough week. And the inmost being is you just crying out to the Lord and just saying, God, I just can't, but you can. <laughs> and I'm here to praise you. I'm here to lift you up. I'm here to say, I need you. All right? So can we do that together today? Let's go ahead and stand up. And uh, I want to read for us uh, Psalms 103 apart from this. And I want this to, to get us in the mindset today to be able to worship our great God from our inmost being. Hear the word of the Lord. It says, come, let us praise the Lord. Guess what? With our inmost being. Let us not, or let us forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all our sins. Amen. He heals all our diseases. He redeems our lives from the pit and crowns us with his love and compassion. He satisfies our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle's. Come, let us praise the Lord with our inmost being. Let's stand and let's worship him today. Amen, everybody. All right. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Okay, we're going to start our worship this morning with the song, Death Was Arrested. I think you all know that one, and it has beautiful lyrics to it. So let's sing from our hearts and our innermost being.
guys, it is awesome to see so many people out there this morning praising, lifting their hands, and worshiping. You know, we all, it's not always about raising your hands. I mean, we're all just very different. We all show our worship in a different way. So however you worship, remember that here we are free to worship in any way we choose, um, quietly or boldly. But the main thing is what Pastor Kevin said, that we want it to be from our innermost being, not about perfect voices or how we look or any of that. We just want to give our best to God from our hearts. So let's continue to worship this wonderful God that we serve this morning. I search the world.
do a new song, and if you all know it, you can remain standing and, and sing. If some of you need to sit, I know some people it's hard to stand for a long time. We'd love for you to if you're able. Uh, this song is called My Jesus, and a, a young woman sings it on Christian radio, and ever since I've heard it, I've really, really liked it. Um, so I, I hope you guys enjoy it too. Are you past the point of weary? Let's start that again. <laughs> okay, we're in F sharp, so you'll be you'll be okay. Well, we're gonna try it again. It's new, so you know how it goes. So just bear with us. Okay, well, let's try it again. Past the point of weary. Are you burdened? Me tell you about my Jesus. Well, we are going to continue with some prayer. Let's go to Jesus. Our Jesus, my Jesus, everyone's Jesus. Because he is the same for you as he is for me. 
Jesus. Man, what a powerful name. That saves. And Lord, sometimes when we don't know what to say, we don't know what to pray. Sometimes all your name is what we need to just come back and say, Jesus, I'm here. I'm in this place. Some of us are weary. Some of us are burdened. Some of us are tired. Some of us are exhausted. Some of us are joyful. Some of us are excited. Some of us are rejoicing. And yet all of us are here finding rest in you. Because you make a way where there is no way. You see, when we see darkness, when we see graves, when we see death, Jesus, you see life, you speak life into us. And you turn the most dark and devastating things into beautiful, grace-redeeming, And so, Jesus, we come to you. Jesus, we thank you that we are more than our past mistakes. There are things that have happened. There are things that we have done. There are sins that we have committed. And yet, Jesus, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you found me, that you found us in the midst of that. Jesus, you are the change maker. You've changed our lives in more ways than one. Jesus, you've changed my life. I thank you that I'm not in the same place I was. I thank you that you keep chasing after me time and time again. And Lord, I'm not alone because you are chasing after every person here. Lord, you will continue to chase after and continue to love because that's your nature. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are a loving God. We thank you that you are more than our mistakes, more than our pasts. Lord, thank you that you have come into our lives and healed us, fixed those broken parts, redeemed us, given us a vision and a purpose. You have called us each by name. And so we are here in this place and we gather together to rejoice, to shout praises to you, to lift you up and say, Jesus, that is why I do the things that I do, because Jesus. So Lord, let us love you with our whole hearts, our whole minds, our whole bodies, our whole souls, not only today, but every day. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you hear our prayers and that you are listening, that you are a God that cares about us. So we lift all of this up and we say, amen. Amen. All right, well, if you are a preschooler to fourth grader, we are going to ha- dismiss you. You've got Sunday school in class. All right, awesome. I see some trickling out. All right. Good to see everybody here today, and uh, welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. Nice to see things kind of filling up again. That's that's good. Good thing. Good thing. Well, it's been been kind of cold out there. It's kind of windy too. Um, yeah. Go ahead and get that. I saw this picture. I don't know. I kind of identify with that guy after yesterday. <laughs> that was crazy out there, wasn't it? <laughs> Had to kind of hold on, hold on. Uh, well, um, today we're going to, we're talking about, we're going to 
start in. I, we may spend several weeks here. I'm not really sure. Just kind of seeking God's direction. But um, we're, we're following the theme today. This is our story. This is our story. So uh, we're going to go back to the very beginning, um, Genesis, Genesis 1, verse 26, if you want to get your Bibles, we'll be looking at that scripture in, in just a minute. And uh, we're going to look at the beginning of our story, and then, I don't know, we might keep going throughout the, the, the story the next few weeks, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We're all very aware, I, I think, that we've been in sort of this uh, chapter of our, our history, or the story in our nation, in our world, when there's just been a lot of negativity. Would you agree with me? That um, um, we've, we've kind of struggled, like we've had reason to be worried and sometimes anxious. And um, there's even, I felt at times, like a little bit of even like hopelessness kind of creeping in um, as we look at the condition of our world. But this morning, as we think about our story, I really want to remind us, and I've been reminded as, as I've looked at, at this, that uh, even though things in our world can be kind of dark and negative, um, that's not our story as followers of Jesus. It's not one of negativity. But our, our story is a story of beauty and hopefulness and, and joy and blessing and redemption, that's where we want to live our lives, in those, those positive things. And so as we look even back to the very beginning, the creation story, we see that it begins with God's goodness and beauty and blessing. That's where it all starts. The story of a God who longs to live in loving relationship with us. And we don't want to be ostriches, you know, those guys that stick their head in the sand, the dirt. We don't want to live there. We don't want to ignore the fact that, yeah, there's bad stuff in the world. It's like, you know, we don't want to just bury our heads and, like, pretend everything is okay. But we do want to live into the story that Jesus has called us to. Not ignoring the ugliness of the world around us, but not trapped and defeated by its darkness and hopelessness. So today, let's um, we're going to kind of walk through the beginning of our, our story. Let's stand together, shall we, as the Scripture is read. Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. Starting right at the, near, right near the beginning. This is the sixth day. And the rest of creation has been completed. Um, then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed on it, in it, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give you every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. It was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. That's just a little high point for us from this wonderful story of God's creative work. You may be seated. You might want to keep your Bibles open. We're going to refer to um, several scriptures here this morning. So, the familiar story 
of the beginning of our universe. We're told that our beautiful blue and green planet, it is beautiful, isn't it? It's forests, it's streams, it's glowing orange sunsets, it's vast oceans, blue skies reflect the glory of our almighty God. Think of Psalm chapter 19, verse 1. Um, read this with me, would you? The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Psalm 19.1. Let's, let's, let's say that again. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Psalm 19.1. The Living Bible translation of this says, The heavens are telling the glory of God. They are mar a marvelous display of his craftsmanship. God created our beautiful world filled with, I don't know, choose what you like. I, puppies? I like puppies. Not so much kitties, but puppies are good. <laughs> if kitties are your thing, that's all right, too. I don't know, eagles, towering redwoods, the Grand Canyon, full moons, billions of stars in the sky, and the sixth day, God's crowning creation. His most beloved companion, human beings, you, his crowning creation. All God's creative power and glory in his handiwork. But only you and I were created in his divine image, the mark of his divine presence stamped on our souls. So God, on the sixth day of creation, after he completed his artistic masterpiece, stood back and admired his creative handiwork. You know, did you ever, you know, build something or make something? You just go, wow, you know, that is, that's good. That's what God did. A little pat on the back. Stood back. Saw this beautiful world that he'd created and the wonderful human beings that he had crafted from the dust of the earth. And he stood back and he looked at it and he said, whoa, this is really, really, really good. He didn't put all the reallys in there, but that, he says, very good. Very good. I did good. And God pronounced his blessing over all that he has made. Now, I know chapter 3 is right around the corner of the fall, right? And things start getting messy there, and sin must be taken seriously. But I want us to know that our story begins with God's creative love, shaping a beautiful world and making us humans and pronouncing it all very, very, very good. Pastor and theologian, a lady named Danielle Schroyer says, God calls us good and beloved before we are anything else. Sin is not at the heart of nature, blessing is. And that didn't stop being true because Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the garden. In fact, it never stopped being true. You are God's beloved daughter. You are God's beloved son. He has stamped his very image on you. You are his very good crowning creation. These are such important truths for us to embed deep within our hearts and our minds because we're living in a world where we are embodied, we are bombarded by so many messages of hopelessness and negativity. And we sometimes are made to feel worthless and shameful and defeated. But the creation accounts in Genesis, our story, make it clear that our worthiness is grounded in the story of our beginning as people created in his image. I know a lot of us struggle feeling worthy of God's love. Maybe you do. I, I point you to Psalm 139. What a, what a great, great and wonderful 
psalm. This is one, we've got to read this one together. This is, I just pulled out a couple verses. Psalm 139. What a wonderful message. Read it with me, would you? For you created me. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalm 139, 13, 14. Right, let's read it in a, this message version. It kind of makes it really, really come to life. Um, read, it, read it with me, would you? Oh, yes. You shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. That's who you are. God's finest creation. You know, there's some of the songs we sing. I, they, they're, there's just a couple of them I'll mention this morning. Um, I, I love the songs, but there's like sometimes these little lines in them that just kind of make me cringe a little bit. So I love the song Amazing Grace. You know, it's one of, probably one of the most popular Christian songs in America. I love it. But sometimes when I hear that one little phrase in there, you've, I know you've sung it many times, it says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Am I a wretch? Are you a wretch? I think I understand the intent behind the writer of that song, that apart from Christ, we're lost. We don't have hope. But if we go back to our beginning story, we've got to make sure that we understand that we're created in the image of God, His most beautiful creation. We're not worthless. And there's another one. There's another one. Let's see. It goes, um, alas, beautiful King, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He, Jesus, devote His sacred head for such a, a worm as I? Some actually, I think in our hymnal, I think they've changed it for sinners such as I. They've changed it a little bit. I guess my concern there, if we see ourselves as wretches and worms, I know some people feel that way about themselves. They struggle because people said, You're nothing, you're no good. They internalize these messages, these negative self images. And I know the songs are reflecting, and there's, there's certainly truth to them, reflecting on the forgiveness and mercy of Jesus. But I fear these concepts can embed themselves like cancer into our sense of who we are so that we can sometimes see ourselves as, as worms and wretches more than we live in the confidence of knowing we are God's crowning most beautiful creation made to reflect his glory, crafted in the wombs of our mothers as his beloved sons and daughters. Okay, let's talk about Genesis chapter 3, where things get messy. Because that's a part of our story, right? You know the story, right? God put Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, he shaped Adam from the dust and Eve from his rib and and put them in the garden and said, here, you know, enjoy the paradise of the garden. And they took walks together, and Adam and Eve were naked and unashamed. And God said, you can eat any fruit, in the tree, from, fruit from any tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Know the story, right? And a serpent came along and tempted Eve to take a bite of the forbidden fruit. And she did, and she gave it to Adam. He took a bite. And sin and pain in childbirth and toil in farming, the, the land entered the world, and they were banished from the garden of paradise. 
And the serpent would now slither in the dirt on his belly. So here's a question for you. Question. Why didn't God want Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and, of good and evil? Why didn't he want them to eat from that tree? I mean, isn't that like why we have youth group and kids Sunday school? To teach our kids the knowledge of good and evil? To make good choices, not bad choices? To know when they're making good choices and what the bad choices are? I mean, isn't that what we try to instill in our children? The knowledge of good and evil? So, well, what was the problem? <laughs> Why wouldn't God want Adam and Eve to have knowledge of good and evil? Well, I'm glad you asked. I guess I asked, didn't I? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've been kind of, kind of chewing on that a little bit th this week. And it seems to me that the answer to why God forbade the eating of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented them gaining the knowledge apart from God, them seeking independence from God. Wanting, as the serpent said, to be like God. That was the, the problem. Rather than enjoying daily fellowship with God and learning from Him, the knowledge of good and evil, growing in their understanding of how he wanted them to live. They attempted to gain the knowledge of good and evil through a convenient shortcut apart from God. In a sense, they tried to grow up too fast, to shake their hand away from a loving parent. I can do it on my own. Before they were ready to run around on their own. story that reminds us that this is the choice we face every day. Between independence, doing our own thing without God, or walking with God, depending on Him, learning from Him, growing in Him, in our relationship with Him, which was what He wanted and what He created us for from the beginning. Learning from His Word the way He has ordained for us to live. Are we going to just do it alone, do my thing, without the wisdom of His daily presence? And this story then teaches us that when we go our own way, when we seek to do it apart from God, when we want to be like Him, when we want to be independent, it leads to exile and desecration and death, which is what we see all around us these days, and which fills the headlines of our newspapers and the news shows that we watch on TV. It's an important part of our story. But even more important is that, than this is what happens after they take the bite of the forbidden fruit, after they're banished from the garden, after they say, we want our independence from God. Yes, God banishes from the garden. He says, okay, you can have your independence. But he doesn't abandon them, does he? The new story begins. And it's just a few chapters after this. God comes to a man named Abraham. And he said, said, Abraham, I want, you to, I want you to leave your family, leave your home, take your wife with you, leave the, your family of origin. I'm going to show you another land, and I'm going to bless the world through your descendants. The world will be blessed. And the whole story, like generation after generation after generation, leads to the story of a pregnancy, <laughs> a baby growing in a teenager, teenager's womb, 
in Jesus. The story of God not abandoning us, but continuing to reach out to us until he finally sends his own flesh and blood son and a baby named Jesus to provide for our forgiveness and new life. There's a young lady named Rachel Evans, and she's a Christian writer. She tragically died at the age of 37 um, just a couple years ago. Um, the last book that she wrote is entitled Wholehearted Faith, and she reflected on, on growing up in a loving Christian home and attending Christian school, and she says I became, she said she became something of an overachiever. And I want to take just a few minutes, I want to read a little bit from from her story. Um, she said, I went to Parkway, Elementary, Parkway Christian School, an elementary school in Birmingham, Alabama. And she said, the most important thing you need to know about PCS is that every year it gave out a special award. It went to one boy and one girl in each classroom. It was voted by fellow students, so it came with a gloss of popular recognition. It was called the Best Christian Attitude Award. Now, you might have heard me tell this story before because I'm still proud uh, that I won it. So I'm a religious overachiever, and I confess I still am, which may say something about whether my Christian attitude was really the best. But whatever. So beginning in the fifth grade, I developed an entire legally strategy to win the election. I let boys cut in front of me at the water fountain. Generosity. I told the entire class I wanted to serve as a missionary in Africa when I grew up, giving my life to Christ. Devotion. I was the first to answer the teacher's questions about the Bible stories we were studying. Scholarship. I promised to pray for everyone's ailing answer. Service. And sure enough, it worked. I won best Christian attitude for four years running. And I probably would have wanted a lot more years, but I, my parents put me in public school. She went on to kind of apply that story to the Bible. She said, why read the story that's about Apostle, the Apostle Peter? I can't help but think the poor guy felt at times as if he might be on the cusp of winning the best Christian attitude award. Peter lived in Jesus' orbit Religious leaders were turning against Jesus. People around town were, were talking. Some were saying that Jesus was a prophet. John the Baptist had recently been beheaded, so others were suggesting he might be John resurrected. Still others were saying that Jesus was some kind of crazy guy ranting about the kingdom being at hand. According to, to Mark, chapter 8, Jesus asked his disciples a question. Remember the question? Who do you say that I am? And Rachel Evans writes, In my imagination, I see Peter shoots up his arm. He's quivering. He screams, Oh, pick me, pick me. I know, I know. You're the Messiah. You're the liberator we've been waiting for. You're the one who will vanquish our enemies, establish a throne, rule forever. Jesus kind of, must. his response must have been pretty disappointing to Peter. Even with all of his enthusiasm, Jesus, you can look at it, he says, yeah, but don't tell anybody. He declined. And then there follows some talk about Jesus facing intense suffering and rejection and death. And Peter, understandably, objects and says, don't talk like that. We're not going to let that happen to you. You're not going to die. And then Jesus seems to grant Peter what amounts to the opposite of the best Christian attitude award. Remember what Jesus said to him? Ooh. But Jesus never says this to me. <laughs> Get behind me, Satan. Rabbi, the one he'd chosen to follow and devote his life to, says, 
calls him Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Man, you never want to hear that from a friend. Somebody you care about. Comparing you to the devil himself. You know, that'll, that'll hurt your self-esteem. And the rebuke, I'm sure, like stung Peter. And he goes on to, Jesus goes on to explain that, that his purpose in coming um, is, is not to establish this great kingdom, to avoid pain. But his way is the way of, of death and sacrifice. And he's going to ride a donkey into the city, and the king's, his kingdom will be characterized by gestures of healing and whispers of mercy, touches of tenderness and waves of grace. And Jesus has this way of explaining what his kingdom will be like. You've you got to be prepared not to win, but to lose. And you may not get your best Christian attitude award. When Jesus said those words to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He was probably not only humiliated, but maybe felt a sense of shame. Shame. In other words, Satan in the Scripture actually... Um, it's grounded, it, it actually, its meaning is the accuser. Um, the one who plants deceptive messages in our minds that we are worthless. Now, it's not that there's a difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is, I did something wrong and I confess that. But shame has to do how I see myself. Shame needs to die. We need to stop listening to the voice of the accuser that tells us that we are unworthy and can never be loved. It's interesting to look on in the story of the interchange between Peter and Peter and Jesus, as it unfolds, you might remember that after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus shows up on the beach while Peter's out fishing with his disciples and with the disciples, and they come back and Jesus got has broiled fish breakfast on the on the beach. And he invites Peter and the disciples to to join him. And there's this conversation that goes on between Peter and Jesus, and Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yeah, you know I love you. And Jesus asked him that three times, and then he keeps saying, yeah, I love you, Jesus. And I'm sure he's wondering, like, why are you asking me this? Then he says, if you love me, feed my sheep. And, and Jesus goes on in the interchange after his resurrection to say, give instructions to his disciples. First, they're going to need the Holy Spirit, just like we do. Um, Pray and wait for the Holy Spirit to be poured out on you because you can't do my work unless you have my Spirit in you, empowering and leading you. But then it's once they had His Spirit, it's, it was about getting to work, doing Jesus' work, feeding my sheep, loving my people, sharing the good news of my forgiving mercy and saving grace. So over that fish breakfast, cooked over the campfire on the beach by the Sea of Galilee, the risen Savior restored Peter's shattered self-esteem. He healed his shame through his loving acceptance and forgiving mercy. It occurs to me that's exactly what he wants to do in your life and mine this morning. Think about your life. No matter how much you sin, no matter how far you've drifted away from Jesus, no many, how many, how, how, however many times you failed Him, our story 
is that Jesus wants you to know that you are God's beloved son. You are God's beloved daughter. You are his highest and most wonderful creation. And here's the one thing I really want you to remember. God don't make no trash. God don't make no trash. I know that's not correct English. But he don't. <laughs> Created in the image of God. And even though that image is tarnished, by our sin, by the failures of our past. We know that because of Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross, his forgiving grace and mercy is available to you. And through your faith in Jesus' death on the cross, he little by little restores the beauty of God's image in you. And he's got work for you to do. He's got sheep for you to feed. Sheep is really people, right? He wants you to love and care for his beautiful creation. He's got a story of salvation and new life that he wants you to share with your friends and coworkers and families and neighbors that Jesus loves them, that their lives can be healed, that they can be forgiven, that they can experience new life. So, oh, can you believe it today? Can you let it sink deeply in your heart, in your mind today, that you are God's most prized creation? And when he looks at you, he says, whoa, you are very good. I'm so proud of you. And why? Well, because... Your creator says so, and that's enough, and that's enough. I'd like us to stand together and have the worship team come back up. Let's pray together. Lord, sometimes when things seem to be so messy in our lives, it helps if we go back to the beginning of our story. We can be reminded of your intention that world would be filled with so much beauty, that we would live in daily fellowship with you. Think of those walks, Adam and Eve, in the cool of the day, the conversations, the fellowship. Think of all you've created and then your crowning creation us us sometimes Lord we think about our lives and we think about ways we've let you down the times we've drifted away things we wish we wouldn't have said, the sins we've committed. We wonder how you could love us. But you do. 
not only created us, but in Christ, you've recreated us. Given us a fresh start, a new beginning. And thank you. That this is our story, the story of creation, the story of recreation. And so, Lord, in all of the negative stuff that has been our lives these last year or so. May we see the beauty. We would see the glory. May we be reminded of the miracle of redemption and new life that is ours. And may we stand in awe in knowing that you love us that we are your deeply loved daughter, the sons that you love more than we can ever understand, and that your grace and mercy is so full and free that through Christ, our relationship with you is restored. We thank you for all of that. This is our story. Help us, Lord, to live into this story that is so clearly spelled out in your word. A story of beauty, a story of new life. You've called us to be lights to the world. And we will be as we live into this story. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing with the worship team this morning. We invite you to continue standing this morning as we close the service. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength.
loved in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever fall me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me May be seated real quick. All right, just a few few announcements uh, before we are dismissed uh, today. Um, hopefully, those of you who are here uh, received a copy of the announcements for this week. And uh, for those who are joining online, um, if you want to see those, make sure you let us know if you're not receiving those by email. Um, but these just help us to be able to stay connected uh, with what's coming up and what's going on. What's uh, what are some opportunities to serve? And get plugged in. So, um, first one I just want to remind us of is um, is just our offering boxes in the back. Um, if you would like to be a part of of what we're doing here and making things possible and being a blessing to others um, as we are called, um, we encourage you to to take advantage of that and drop those in. Or you can always give online as well. Um, so those are a couple options there. Uh, today um, we have a foundations of faith class, so uh, those who are looking to become members or just learning more about uh, where we stand on certain things and uh, in, our, in our faith, um, that class is going to start right after this, uh, this service, uh, right here in our foyer with Pastor Steve, so he'll be teaching. Uh, we have several that are, that are joining in for that, um, so feel free. If you didn't even sign up, if you want to come be a part of that, you're welcome, welcome to be there for that. Uh, we also need um, some help. Um, some volunteers to help um, a, an elderly couple in our church to be able to move. And so um, right now we're going to flash a, a, a something else up there. Okay, so if you can help with moving, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, 1030, uh, with packing or on Saturday at 9 a.m., there's our numbers. So a lot of times we don't throw out our numbers because we don't want you to just... <laughs> Prank us. Well, that, that's, what, that's why I don't give out my number to the team. No, I'm just kidding, because they take advantage of that. But no, here are our numbers. We love that you have our numbers, because we do want you to reach out when you need something. But in this case, right now, if you have a cell phone, you are given full permission right now to text us and say, hey, I'm all about helping. I'm willing to help, and I, I can do whatever it takes. Or let us know when you're available and we would love to, love to have some help with that, okay? So um, text us, let us know if you can help um, serve in that way. We do need some volunteers for that. All right, uh, next thing is for all our ladies. We got ladies' tea coming up this Saturday, and uh, Karen, Karen, who's standing right behind me, you need to RSVP to her by today, okay? She needs to know for all the numbers-wise and make sure everything's prepared for that. So, ladies, uh, please let Karen know. Um, that's going to be Saturday uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in our fellowship hall. And I think there's already over 40 signed up. Let's get, let's get to 50 or 60. I'm, I'm sure there's several others out there. So come, come join. It'll be a good time. Um, next thing I want to bring up is uh, the baby bottle. We've been announcing those uh, for the Hagerstown Area Pregnancy Center. Um, we would love to have those back so we can make a donation to uh, the clinic. So um, please bring those in uh, next week. Um, next week would be great if possible if you can drop them by. If you're not going to be here, maybe you can swing by and drop them off uh, in the office earlier. That would be great. Um, also, this is kind of a new, new something that we're going to be doing this year. And uh, so on March 2nd uh, is the start of Lent. And uh, we signify that by Ash Wednesday. And so we're going to be having a joint uh, service for, um, for the teens and for any adults who are, who are willing and want to come out for this. It'll be a meaningful uh, service as we reflect on, on, and as we prepare our heart for Easter and, and as we prepare our heart even for Good Friday of what 
what Christ uh, did for all of us. So that will be a special time. So um, that will be at 6.30 on March 2nd. Okay? Then uh, we also are planning for uh, some baptisms. So um, we're, we're going to be doing that here in April. And so we're excited about that uh, for new life. If you maybe have never been baptized and you're saying, well, you know what? I think I'm ready to take that next step in my faith. Um, we would love to know. We'd love to be able to journey with you in that and prepare you uh, for those services. So that will be something to look forward to. But let me or Pastor Steve know if you're interested in that. We're also uh, collecting items for Operation Christmas Child throughout each month. And so uh, just a reminder for February, we're doing coloring books and crayons. And then as we prepare to change months and we get into March, we're going to be looking for bars of soap, 89 to be exact, okay? <laughs> 89 bars of soap, 100 boxes of Band-Aids, and 90 toothbrush cases, okay? So there's a few items that maybe you can, uh, as you're at the store, and if you see some, grab a couple, and you can bring those in and just put them um, by the Welcome Center. There's a little box um, that we're collecting those items, okay? Um, we also have a Ignite Men's Conference coming up, so we're getting, getting ready. We have a good group of men that are going to be going and staying overnight um, down in Lynchburg, Virginia, and uh, we have several awesome speakers that are coming in. It is not too late for you men um, to sign up, um, but please let Tim Clip know. And if you don't, have, if you don't know Tim Clip, you don't know me, I would love to introduce you to him. So reach out to me or Pastor Steve will get you connected. Um, but let, let Tim Clip know if you're planning on going, if you've signed up, so he can get you all the, the details with that. And last but not least, we have these awesome devotional uh, reflection books that take you throughout each day of the week. And that's going to begin, begin on uh, Monday, February 28th and throughout kind of this season. So if you're looking for a devotional guide, something to kind of Keep you, keep you in the Word, keep you um, encouraged. This would be a great resource. They are absolutely free. We would love for you just to pick them up today um, right in the Welcome Center on your way out, okay? So make sure you grab one of those. And uh, that is the announcements. There's a lot, but that's a good thing because it means things are happening. We're being a part of what God is doing. So we want to just say thank you for joining us um, here. If you need anything, if you have prayer requests, please let us know. Um, we want to join in you in, in the messiness of this life. Um, but we're, as we're reminded today, we are made in the image of God, and that is something to celebrate. And, uh, and so we are the church, and the church was never meant to be contained inside this building here. We are the church, and we are now dismissed to go out to love everyone around us and to be a blessing and be loved ourselves. Amen? All right. Have a good week. We will see you next week, all right?